the first thing is like I had a couple points that I wanted to address for sure Um, because I had like the same conversation with two students today and then you know I'll talk a little bit about that and then um, you know they don't answer questions but let me let me go on my little rant real quick (laughs) so and I'm always like congested during a live I don't understand like I'll be perfectly fine and then when the live comes in it's like I just need a gallon of water for no reason Makes <laughs> no sense. <clears throat> mm. All right. So the first thing is, <clears throat> let me get right. <clears throat> okay. Oh shit! It does tell me how many people are here. Five hundred. Okay. Sweet. So the first thing is, um, I had a conversation with two of my students, and <clears throat> we had the same conversation of, like they're a little bit frustrated with the coach because they want to play a certain way and shoot certain shots. But then um, the coach is like mad at them for doing that, you know, and I'm always like a believer in do what you want to do, but there's conditions to doing what you want to do. Like the, that's the thing you got to remember. There's always conditions and the condition is it has to work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of players forget, like those are the conditions in which 99% of basketball players live in. It's like, okay, You can do a lot of stuff, but if it don't work, then you can't do that shit no more. You know, it's the same thing I tell my players. It's like, if you're going to go one-on-one, I either need buckets or you better start running the fucking offense. Like, there's no other way around that. And so don't forget, you know, that's the case when you go and play basketball. Like, there's just, you have to deal with, yes, like consequences. You have to deal with the consequences that come with missing when you do your own thing. And so, you know, if you're good enough, you can do pretty much whatever you want with those conditions of it needs to work and you need to make the shots. And the way to not get yanked for it is you have to have a little bit of self-awareness within yourself to be like, okay, I realize this hasn't worked and the coach hasn't said anything yet, but it's like, okay, let me, let me get really, really basic real quick. Like, let me just do regular shit. I'll shoot wide open shots. I'll swing it. You know what I mean? Like I'll make a couple layups here and there. And then like, a quarter later okay now let me try this again and see if this works like do a move whatever make if you make it then okay now you can kind of get the ball rolling a little bit if you miss it again then you got to go back to being basic and like that's just the game you got to play if you want to stay in you know what i'm saying and so don't forget like those are the conditions in which most people play under and you know if you're gonna do your own thing you got to play you either that shit got to work and you should have been practicing it there's no other conditions to it You know, because if it works long enough, then the coach can't say nothing. That's always my take. And so when people are like, the coach won't let me do this or the coach won't let me do that. It's like, make the shots and watch what happens. You know what I'm saying? And so don't forget, like, that's what you're playing under. And then um, the other thing is I had told another player is like everything counts. Everything that you do counts. You know what I'm saying? And so if you let's say you don't practice for a day like that counts towards your progress. And so that'll take you away from where you want to go. Like if you're trying to get better at shooting and one day you don't shoot, you got to realize like that counts, you know what I'm saying? And then the times that you do go shoot, like that counts towards getting you better. The times that you watch film, that counts towards you getting you better. The time you were lazy and you're just sitting on your phone and you were in the bed, like, oh, okay, yeah, that counts. Like it got me worse that day. You know what I'm saying? And so realize like everything counts. That doesn't mean like, um, that don't mean like you got to, Like, I don't know, you got to be like stressed about every single thing that you do, but you just got to realize like everything adds up at some point, you know what I'm saying? And always remember that when you're doing things. And so when you are practicing, like you got to practice perfect. That's what I always say is like when I practiced, it was if I roll the ball to myself, I'm going to catch it perfect. I'm going to be in triple threat perfect. My first step's going to be perfect and I'm going to try to shoot it perfect. Like every, every single thing that I'm doing. So a lot of people when they practice their layups like they don't they don't take into account how they caught the ball when they're actually practicing their layups like they don't take into account you know ball placement when they pick it up they're just like okay I'm practicing my layups but like, you got to practice everything before that as well you know what I'm saying like that counts for building habits so then when you catch the ball in the game it's just automatic it's like okay I always catch the ball like this so I don't know any other way and so you got to get to that point when you're practicing on your own and be like okay whatever I'm doing today, it's going to be perfect. Like my footwork's going to be perfect. You know, my balance is going to be perfect or at least make an effort to be that. 
and then you'll see a different level of results because um one of my students today matter of fact the same person i was having a conversation with uh they they kind of they got too good for the workout they were doing and so you know my work my workouts is just like a lot of makes and once you get so good at makes it's like you don't have to focus as hard in order to make the shot and so if you get to that point to where your practice is too easy to where it's like you can just do it automatically and like nothing phases you you got to find a different level to keep your focus alive and so instead of just counting makes now it's like okay i'm counting swishes and then instead of counting swishes now it's like okay now i'm doing how many can i make in a row how many can i swish in a row like did it feel perfect to me did it come off my hands perfect like did it did, did my feet feel perfect you know what i'm saying like you got to get to a different level of perfection in order to keep your focus high enough so when you get into the game you're still focused enough to make the shots because if you're practicing like yeah you might be making all the shots and all these other things but if you're not focused in your practice it's not going to translate to the game and so don't forget that part you know for the people out there that get really really good at their thing and like okay i can make 30 in a row like this is i'm just out here making 30 in a row 40 in a row this is nothing <clears throat> you got to find a different level to go to where it's swishes okay now it's all backboard no rim you know what i mean and now it's okay now it's everything's on the move okay now everything's after down and back now everything's in a row you know what i'm saying you got to be you got to find different levels to uh, keep things in a place where it's not too easy for you like that's where you got to get to you know what i'm saying so i just really i wanted to cover those two things um before i did the q a because i don't know how long i'm gonna be on tonight probably like 40 ish minutes or something like that so yeah i'll answer many questions um as many questions as you guys got and i got the chat on my computer this is way better than looking at my phone like i just got my whole my lighting shit looks good right now all right <clears throat> steven a. look nothing like steven a. you're on crack you're welcome you're welcome um is it okay to focus on athleticism more than skills for a long period of time i think i mean i think like uh yeah you know what i'm saying if you need it because you got to realize like i'm always going to say this you have to understand yourself and what you need like i have students that we literally have to focus on 80 percent athleticism that's what we got to do you know what i'm saying i have two you have two students that we really got to do that with you know what i mean because their skill is there but it's like athleticism is holding them back a little bit you know but if it's if it's a thing that you think will help you make a big enough jump um as far as like how you play then yes prioritize that you know so i prioritize your biggest weakness at all times like if you're but you also got to make sure that it's like it matters to the game so like yeah your left hand your left hand might be your weakest um asset or whatever but if it does not affect your game and there's something else that does, you know, what my defense, like let's say it's defense or left hand. Defense is probably more important than your left hand, even though your left hand might be weaker than your defense. You see what I'm saying? And so you got to prioritize like your biggest weakness and match it with what matters most in a real game. And then whatever that is, you got to do that as much as you possibly can until you get that down. Like nothing else takes priority over that. That doesn't mean only do that thing but it's like okay 70 percent of the time i'm only doing this number one thing of my weakness you know what i'm saying and then everything else you can kind of let it fall underneath and then you just keep doing that over and over so let's say you get really athletic and it's working for you then it's like okay i'm really athletic but my shot's been off so now instead of athleticism being number one you then go to shooting now shooting's your number one priority and you do that 70 percent of the time and you're still reviewing the other stuff like dribbling shooting whatever it is and then after you're shooting, like a new, another weakness comes up, you know, because in the way you tell is you got to always play. And so if you're only practicing and you never play, you'll never know what your weaknesses are. And so you got to like practice and play in tandem. Like those two things go together. Like the playing is going to show you what you got to work on, you know, and showing you what works. Like you could be in the gym all day working on your jump shot and you did that for three months. And then the first time you play, you realize you can't get that shit off. You just wasted three months when you could have figured that out in three weeks. You know what I mean? And so um, doing both of those things matter. How to be confident as a new point guard. Okay, I've been through this. <laughs> I think for number one, um, open gym. Open gym is always gonna be like my biggest um, suggestion for a lot of players, like pick up runs without the coach where you can do the thing you need to work on because you gotta get into a space to where you can experiment, you can test certain things, be like, okay, this is, 
This is what I learned, you know, how to keep people off me. So you can try it. You might get ripped and turn it over and realize, okay, I got to do it differently. But in a real game or a real practice with coaches around, like you don't get the chance to fix your errors as you're playing. And so pickup is like the most important thing. If it's competitive, don't play bullshit pickup. It has to be competitive. And then that's where you go out there and it's like, okay, I got to get ready for a point guard. Let me bring the ball up. You know what I'm saying? Take, get it get the rebound and just run the point one time and, you know what I'm saying? If you even got to tell the whoever's guarding you, like I always want the best player to guard me. That's how I play open gyms, no matter where it's at. It's like I want to play against the best player or one of the best players. I don't want to play against a scrub. And so it's like for someone that's trying to learn those things, you got to tell a good defender. Like if you're good at picking up full, it's like, hey, pick me up full. Like I want to work on my shit. You know what I'm saying? And go at that person and test your shit and, you know, keep working on your handles. But the confidence thing is just like point guard's tricky, man, because you got to – you got to manage the offense. You got to get down floor. You got to handle the pressure. You got to break the press. You got to, uh, you know, make the first pass. And you can't get ripped while doing all that. And you can't have your back to the basket the whole time either. And you got to break the five second call. So, like, it's a lot of shit. But I think, you know, as far as confidence wise, you just got to do it over and over and over and over. But then you got to realize, like, what point guards actually do, which is they run, um, they pass ahead. You know, they play fast and they're they're attacking nine times out of ten. Like if a defender slips up, if they're out of position or they're too close to you, you got to turn that into attack fast enough, fast enough for um, for your team to take advantage of it. You know what I'm saying? So if you're in the backcourt and they reach and they mess up, like you got to attack them and go straight to the basket and make somebody help and make that pass like that's going to keep the defense honest. Um, and then there's a lot of things behind that. But I think it's just practice your handle and let people press you and do it at pickup. And then by the time the season comes, you should be all right. What percentage of threes should I make out of a hundred shots? 25 shots in five spots. Um, 25 shots in five spots is 125. And what percentage should I make? I don't, uh, there's no real answer for that. Like make, try to make them all. That's, that's what I would say. I, I think, like you got to go off game results. I don't do anything based off how you did at practice. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing that people keep getting messed up. It's like business, right? People and there's literally businesses that will look at every single thing, every single thing besides their revenue and their bottom line in order to judge their business. It's like the goal is to make money. So if did like is what you did is the marketing thing that you did um, making you money or not, you know what I'm saying? And so is the thing that you're practicing getting, getting you game results or not? That's all you got to think about. So it's, it's not what percentage should I shoot at practice? It's not, um, should I do this or that? It's like, is what you're doing, getting you results? Yes or no. That's the only lens at which you need to look at your practice by, you know what I'm saying? Not percentages, not shit. You know what I'm saying? Because then you get, and it's not to say, it's not to say, don't think about it. Don't think about what percentage you're shooting. You know what I mean? But I think it's just find a way to keep a sustained level of focus while you're practicing. And then on top of that, play every day. So then you can see it and be like, what I'm practicing gets me game results. Or I practice my handle for four weeks and I'm still getting ripped. That means you're doing something wrong. You know what I'm saying? And so that's it. That's the only thing you need to look at. That's not percentages could be great there's people who can dribble the mess out of the ball and then they suck at dribbling in the game um there's people who can shoot the shit out of the ball and don't shoot well in the game and it's like what am i you got to think about it in that lens and then you know reverse engineer and figure out what's going wrong why you're not getting it to translate to the game like that's it that's the only thing you need to look at who's been some of your favorite college basketball freshmen this year juju watkins (laughs) cold (laughs) cold that's that's who um and i'm not even trying to be funny she's cold she's the top three i think it's i think it's Paige. well i need to see a little bit more from Paige. um but i would say right now it's obviously i think caitlin and juju and Paige are the top three players period um but juju being a freshman i would say her that's my favorite college basketball freshman right now on the boy side i don't really have an answer if i'm being honest maybe like i'm a kentucky fan so i like rob dillingham i think he's sharp as shit um, I think he understands basketball on a level that most people don't realize. And he's going to be, I don't know. How tall is he? How tall is Rob? Hill? 
How tall is Rob Billingham? 6'3"? Yeah, he's going to be a problem in the league. He's going to be real. Rob, I'm telling you, whoever gets Rob Dillingham, they're getting a real, play, real player. Like, he's just sharp. His movement is efficient. He understands defense. And that's another thing I wanted to point out. Um, if you want to be really, really good at offense, you have to understand everything about defense. Like, that's the trick. That's why Tom Brady was so good. And I might have said this before, but I don't remember where I said it. Um, but the reason Tom Brady's so good, or was so good, is he understands defense, like, to a T. And so when you know the responsibility of um, when you know the responsibility of, you know, the players on defense, like if you know what they're supposed to do and where they're supposed to be and the principles, then you know how to manipulate it. And you know, like what's going to happen. Like like, if I go right, I know your job is to stop me. And so therefore you left that open. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like understanding that it's going to make you way better on offense. Is it smart to spend the summer focusing on training and working out instead of playing AU basketball? Both. Both. People have asked me this before. Like, if you're going to play, they always say, okay, should I play AU or should I play, or should I just work out? It's both. It really is. Like, I don't think you have to choose because AAU, you get one practice a week. What are you doing? You know, and you don't have school. So you, you two hours of practice per week, you have <laughs> seven other days. You know what I'm saying? And let's say you play. Let's say you play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? So I'll eliminate those days. You got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then you got Friday during the day. So you basically got five days to practice. And so I don't understand the concept of choosing whether to do AAU or to practice when you don't have school and you have all fucking day. You're not at AAU all day. I don't understand that question. And I'm not trying to pick on you, but I don't understand that question. It's literally do both. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's just no excuse not to if you really, if you want to be good. I don't understand why. Um, and uh, do I remember you from Monarchs? I remember that name. Yeah, I remember you. I'd have to see your face, but I remember. I remember a little bit. Yes. What's up? Everybody thinks I forgot about the Monarchs. I love the Monarchs. Um, yeah, I love the Monarchs. I didn't forget. <laughs> I'm literally wearing the one Monarchs hoodie. Uh we talking about basketball, Edgar. What's up? Uh, how do you mentally and physically prepare for the game? So a lot of people have asked me this, and I always go by the principle of, like, know yourself. Um, but I'll give you a couple things, like, that could possibly help because I think I need to get away from just saying, oh, just figure it out because that's pretty much what I've been saying, like, figure it out. Uh, <laughs> but for me personally, like, the thing that I, I didn't do nothing to prepare for the game. Like I just got shots up. I made sure I was warm. Um, you know, I was probably like eating candy. <laughs> like I'm one of those people, like I could literally, you know, be fresh off video games or I could be like outside skateboarding or doing whatever the fuck and then show up to the gym and play well. Like that's just me because I know how to stay in the moment. And so when the moment arises of like, I got to play a basketball game, I can eliminate everything else. So I don't feel like I have to get myself ready. I'm just so in the moment that it doesn't matter. It's like, okay, I'm hanging out with my friends and, or like when I was in college, okay, maybe I'm with my girl or, you know, um, maybe I'm just at home, like watching highlights or playing video games or whatever. But then like when the clock hits and it's time for me to go to the gym, I don't even remember what I was doing before the games. If I'm trying to be honest, like what was I doing before the games? I have no idea what I was doing before the games. I was probably, I'd probably ate something. Yeah, I don't. I have no idea. I I would just show up and hoop, and I would play well. But I'm that type of person. Like I heard Kevin Durant's that type of person where like he don't got to do nothing. He's just like chilling, hanging out, probably messing with music, video games, doing whatever. And then he shows up to the gym, and you know he can get a bucket. That's how I felt. But I think some things you can do. I'll give you a couple things I think you can do. I think number one, um, try to be like try to do something fun like that's what I was, you want to be in a good mood before the basketball game you know and some people like to be super serious and so like there's there's two ways to go to about, go about it it's like me I'm a fun I know how to balance the fun and the seriousness like I can joke around but like I know how to lock in at the same time and it's my ability to lock in and be serious is what allowed me to joke around and have fun because I didn't feel like I was missing anything or I didn't feel like I wasn't prepared so like I felt so prepared and so locked in. And it's like, okay, I can joke around and we can have fun and I can laugh. You know what I'm saying? But when it's game time, it's like, it's game time. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, let's go. I'm ready. You know, so that's t- that's me. And I think, you know, yeah, I would say, like, try to have fun, be relaxed, like, listen to some relaxing music. Um, You know, don't overthink it. Don't try to, like, over strategize what your plan is. Um, You know, I would say do your scouting stuff the day before. It's hard to remember the day of. Like, it's I think they've done some research on, like, trying to give player strategy the same day as the game. It's 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 basically useless. Um, it's like studying the same day of a test. It don't work. But I could cram. So the night before, I would cram for three hours, and then I could get an A on the test. Like, I could do that. And so if you're trying to prepare, like, as far as strategy, you know what I'm saying, I would say study leading up to it. But then the day of, just, like, be free. Um, don't think too hard. Like, rely on your preparation. Get some shots up. Make sure your shot is warm. That's the number one thing I'll say. Make sure your shot is warm and your handle feels good. Whatever you got to do to do that, I think you'll be fine. Um, and don't rely on that 20 minute warm up to get you ready. I I had to get ready. Like there was times where I had to do form shooting and like we would be at the gym and we're supposed to be doing team warm ups. But like I'm on the side basket doing form shooting because I got to get ready and I can't rely on my nine shots that I'm about to get in this fucking warm up to get me right. I just can't do that. And so, um, you know, that was my ritual. It was like I had to figure out a way to do form shooting before the game. But other than that, you know, I was fine. So I think for you, just try different stuff. Like think about when you played well before and be like, okay, what was I doing that day? Like what or what makes me play well in general? Like what do I normally do leading up to, you know, my time of playing? Like what am I normally doing? And try to do that and tweak a couple things. Watch what you eat. You know, don't drink too much water, shit like that. And I don't know. I think you'd be all right. How would you work out on the court and other aspects? Currently, ankle rehab, can't run, can't jump. So if you're if you're um, if you're injured, I think you have to honor the injury that you have. And so don't. I just feel like the mic's too high. Yeah, you have to honor the injury you have, and don't try to force it, and don't try to be like, okay, I need to work through this. Like, just take care of your injury and do what you can do. And so. Whether it's like, okay, I'm going to just go and do some form shots or just like touch shots, just put the ball in the basket around the rim, um, whatever that is, like just do those things. But don't be in a rush. Don't try to like figure out some way to get back faster. It's just do what you can do. You know what I'm saying? Get your rest. Make sure your ankle's right or whatever injury you got in the moment. Make sure it's right. Watch basketball, study film, um, and do light stuff that's not going to put pressure on your injury or, or risk um, risk the recovery taking longer. That's what I would say. Um, yeah, so just don't rush it. Just do, you know, what you got to do and um, trust the process, you know, like Joel Embiid. <laughs> what age is basketball over for someone, like competition? Um, a lot of people ask this question. I don't think there's an age to it. Um, I think, especially now, I think the age thing is like, we're getting into a new space of how people are going to look at age because think about LeBron, right? Um, he's 40 doing what he's doing. 39, 40, Steph Curry's 35, Kevin Durant's like 35 doing what they're doing. I think there's a way to like where your body can still act as if you're 28, you know what I'm saying? but you can actually be 37. Like if you've seen the the knees over toes guys, like they're fucking dunking and landing damn near with their knee touching the ground in some weird flex position. Their body is fine for playing basketball. You know what I'm saying? And so I don't think there's an age to it. I think it's just, can you still move like an, an elite athlete or like a, like an athlete that's um, whatever the competition level you're playing at. And so, can you still keep up with college players? Can you still keep up with pro players speed wise? And um, how much is your body breaking down? Like how much are you taking care of it? Like those are going to be the things that allow you to play for as long as possible. And so I don't think there's an age to it because some people get washed out at 28 and their body is absolute trash. And then there's people at like 37 who are in the best shape of their life and they can run and jump and dunk and all this other shit, you know, and then their mind's sharp and they can still play. So I would say, yeah, don't look at the age as much. Look more of like, can you perform when it's time to perform? That's the only question I would ask myself. And then um, and then go where you want to play, like figure out some way to, 
you know, if, if you're trying to play in some overseas thing or semi-pro or whatever it is, figure out a way to get to the thing that you need to get to in order to be seen and compete for a spot um, in the league that you want to play. Like, that's what I would say. You know, it's less about the number, more about how you feel. And can you keep up? How do you feel about training camps? I like training camps. It depends what you're learning. I think everything depends on your coach. Like everything depends on everything depends on your coach. I'm telling you. So I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's train. Like for me, I treat when people come and train with me, I'm preparing you to play on a team. I'm not preparing you to get in your shit and get a bucket off. I'm preparing you to go to a team and be efficient. In like we do rebounding at my training, we do handling a full court press at my training and th- passing it out of traps, and we work on, you know, defense and and all these things. Like that's like when you come to me as a trainer, these are the things that we're doing shit that a coach would do. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so I don't change what I'm doing just because it's individual or um, it's team. Like I still treat everything in some way as if. I know you have to play an actionable basketball game and I know how basketball games work where you're not going to get seven dribbles every single possession and you're not going to be able to go one-on-one every possession and you're going to have to swing the ball and cut. You know what I'm saying? And so that's how I prepare my players to play. Um, And I think as long as whatever you're going to in a training camp is preparing you to do things that matter, um, then it's good. But if you're just going to go there and dribble the air out of the ball for, um, you know, three hours a day all week, then you may be wasting your time unless you need that. Unless that's like, you know, one of your weaknesses where it's like, I need to go dribble because I can't fucking dribble. You know what I'm saying? Um, So that's how I would look at it. Look deep into the coach, you know, what should hoopers do about knee pain? Go look up. um, Why can't I think of the knees over toes guy? What's the, what's that shit called? ATG athletics. Yeah. ATG workouts. Go look that up. That's what I would tell you. I'm not an expert in the body yet. I'm still studying um, that side of things. I'm still studying athletic training, which I'm going to like, I'm going to be one of those. I, you know, what's crazy like this. I'm sidetracking real quick, but there's a part of me that wants to open up like athletic training or just physical training, but for older people that can't move well, like, you know, like you ever seen those old people and their back is like, or they're moving like a fucking snail and they can barely walk. Like I want to help those people move better. I don't know what it is. I see those people all the time and I'm like, fuck, it must suck to move one mile an hour or it takes you 20 minutes to get in and out of the car. Like that looks tragic. And so, um, (laughs) yeah, I'm sidetracking, but I want to do something like that at some point. Um, so I probably will, but since I'm not an expert on the body yet, look up ATG training athletic truth group, um, knees over toes, all that kind of stuff. And look at go to training, G O A T A go to movement. Look into that too. Cause I'm studying that as well. So those are the two things I would do. And then stretch and yoga and, um, yeah, mobility like, yeah. And, and, uh, I want to bring up icing. So, um, the guy that invented rice, like rest, ice, compression, elevation, he came out probably, Years after, I don't know how long this was after he came up with that like theory and said I was wrong. Like, um, and you got to move your muscles and you got to like get mobile. You know what I'm saying? And so icing is only for sore muscles. It's not for injury. It's not for strains. It's not for um, tend or yeah, it's not for tendons or it's not for twisted ankles. You do not want to ice in those situations because it's just making everything stiff. Like think like, and I don't know why I never thought of this, but think about it logically, right? Imagine you get like an icicle and you just like bend it. It's going to snap and break and it's stiff as fuck. And like you put a rubber band in the freezer, you're not going to be able to stretch it. But if you move it all the time and it's out and it's getting like, it's, it's mobile and it's being used, then naturally the blood is going to flow to it and it's going to heal. And so that doesn't mean like stress it out and just be running on a hurt ankle all day, but it's like move it every day, get blood to it. Um, don't let it sit too long. And, you know, the diff- and I want to look deeper into it to see actual techniques as far as healing. But um, that's what I would say is like look deeper into all the bullshit you've probably been told and um, you'll find the truth somewhere in there, especially when it comes to knee pain. you got to use your muscles 
or they atrophy. You're welcome, Edgar. Appreciate you. Everybody says, you real as fuck, man. You always keep it real. You're always 100. And that was one of my favorite uh, messages that I got is somebody was like, you're not motivational like these other coaches. You actually tell us what we need to do. But it's like, what are we here for? You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I'm not a motivational type person. Like, I'm more, I will demotivate you. Like, I'll tell you the truth to where, to a point to where it's like, you might quit because it's too real. It's like, oh, shit, I got to do all that. Well, I don't want to do that then. You know what I mean? And which is good because I don't want you to go through life thinking like there's this phony ass process. And then you get to the end, you realize you've been lied to. It's like, I'm just going to tell you straight up like you got this is what you got to do. Do the same thing 300 times every single day and it's going to translate. No one wants to hear that shit. But the people that hear it and they're like, oh, that's what I got to do. Oh, OK. And then they go and do it and it works. And it's like, damn, somebody should have told me that shit earlier. Like, that's where I feel like I'm at. I'm just, it's like, I'm just going to tell you. And then you can decide for yourself whether you want to do it or not. But I'm not going to bullshit you. I don't have time to bullshit you. You know? How can I get over Osgood Slaughters? Um, because it's holding me back when I play. Um, I think same thing. Like, look into those knee exercises, ATG, all that stuff. And figure out. Um, do a bunch of different exercises until you can figure something out, like stretch every day. Like take, I think this is the overarching message is take your body seriously. Like a lot of people don't take their body seriously. Like I didn't take my body seriously until going into my junior year because I was kind of slow. I was quick, but I couldn't run like straight line fast. I wasn't that fast. You know what I'm saying? I could jump a little bit. Like I had good jumping technique, but like I could barely grab the rim and I'm like six foot at the time, probably like six, two at the time. Um, you know, I wasn't laterally quick. I couldn't stay in front of people that easy. Um, and so I took my body seriously. So I was like, I'm going to get quicker. I'm going to get stronger. I'm going to get faster. I'm going to jump higher and I'm going to do this shit for real. And then it just changed my game completely. i um, going into my junior season and, and especially it prepared me for college. Like when I showed up to college, I was college ready outside of my knee injury. Cause I was fresh off surgery. I was beyond college ready just because like I was, ex I was as strong as everyone else there. And that's the thing about college basketball. If you are trying to play college basketball, you cannot be scrawny, bro. Like there's no if, ands or, but like people, oh, people point out anomalies like fucking Kevin Durant and all these dudes. Like you got anybody that's six, six and up, you might be able to get a pass, but you have to have a supreme level of skill and shooting ability. You can't be scrawny with an okay jump shot and think you're going to like get somewhere. It's like, no, bro, you got to be strong. There's nobody in co that's playing college basketball. That's like really, really good. And they're not strong. You know what I'm saying? Or you got to be hyper explosive. Like, so those small skinny guards like John Morant, hyper explosive, you know, like that you got to be one of the two. And you don't got to be built like a fucking bodybuilder, but you can't be just, just be getting pushed around and shit. <laughs> Jovi, Jovi, you know, you're not going to the gym. Um, <laughs> Why are you asking me that question? Uh, Go as much to, to answer that question for anybody else that asks questions like, how much should I go to the gym? Um, It's depends on your goal. If you want to be a solid varsity player, hour a day. If you want to be an NBA player, um, six hours a day. I was reading Tim Grover's book. He said basketball is more mental than physical. Okay, yeah. So the thing about basketball being more mental, because I always say it goes mind, body, skill. Like if your mind is right, you'll be able to get yourself to do the things um, to take care of your body and you'll be able to perform well in the game. Like if your mind ain't right, it don't matter how physically strong or athletic you are. It don't matter your skills. If your mind ain't right, you're going to suck. So mind always comes first, body comes second, because if you're out of shape or um, you're just unathletic or you're always injured, then you can't even perform the skills you've been working on. And so, yeah, you got to get your mind right. You got to get your body right. And then your skills come after that. And so it's a lot of work to be elite. Like once you realize how much work it actually is to be elite, um, then you kind of get a reality check because somebody messaged me, messaged me and they were like, how am I supposed to fit in doing isometrics and plyos and stretching? And how am I supposed to do all that? And I was like, yeah, that's why it's hard to be a pro. Like, it's not just some cakewalk that people, oh, I got game. Not get, no, like you might have game, but are you going to be tired in the first three minutes of the game? You know, is your bot, can your body sustain uh, a long 
period of time running and jumping and changing directions and stopping and landing and pushing and getting pushed and, you know, physical rebounds, like all these types of things falling on the ground. Can your body sustain those type of things? Are you flexible so you're not going to tear a muscle or pull a hamstring if you slip? Like being a professional, like I always say this. I say this so many times, man. People forget what the word professional actually means. Like take it away from basketball because basketball is so frivolous that you could just like go to the park and play and like pros can get scored on at the park. That's that's the trick. It's like pros can go to the court and play an average drill and get scored on. That's why people's mind gets tricked when they're like, oh, I could be a pro. And it's like, no, you can't because you the thing you just did to that pro in that one moment at pickup, you can't sustain that for a 40 game season with practice three hours a day. You can't sustain that. You know what I'm saying? And so people forget, like, it's the grind you got to be ready for. It's not the game. It's the grind. Prepare yourself for the grind. You can have too many cooks in the kitchen. Um, I don't I don't know the first part you're saying, but the too many cooks in the kitchen, yes, that is a real thing. That is a real thing in all aspects. Like, for me, if when I do projects with other people or I work with other people, I make it a point to know who is in charge like it's the reason i don't coach a high school i was going to coach a freshman boys high school team this year the reason i didn't do it is because i didn't i wasn't going to be in charge i wasn't going to be able to run the practices and coach on the sidelines and call the plays and make the subs and i didn't want to put myself in a situation to where i could not do that i can't take it anymore i can't take being assistant anymore i really can't um so i have to be a head coach and if i'm not going to do that then i'm not doing it you know, but I make it very clear that there's not there's there's not going to be no dual coaching. Like I've done it one time where when I was with another program, um, I substitute coached for someone else. And while I was head coaching, another coach ran the substitutions and it fucked my whole game plan up. And so the next game I told him, I was like, I need to do the substitutions. And like he had to let me do the substitutions because I wasn't going to do it any other way. I was like, it just can't work. I can't be out here strategizing. And then you fu- you put a player in that I don't want in the game right now because it's going to fuck the plan up. You know, and I think we lost that game because of that. And so I had to just be flat out like, uh, don't spam the chat. I'm going to see your answer. I'm going to see your question. Do not spam the chat. Um, But I had to let it be known, like only one of us is going to be in charge. I, and I'm OK being an assistant if I know that's what I'm going to be. And like I'll, I'm fine letting someone else be in charge or like even playing a game. I'm fine letting someone else, someone else being the number one option. But it has to be crystal clear. You know, I'm not going to do no uncertain, uncertain shit. Yeah, please don't spam the chat, though. I'm going to see every chat, bro. There's not that many messages in here. I'm just I need to make my points clear before I move on. He said, have a mental session every day. Um, I don't even know what that means. I think it's just like clear your mind every day. So don't be walking around with baggage or like guilt or anxiety or depression like you got to clear your mind and clear your conscience and so if there's things you've done that you've not forgiven yourself for or you haven't forgiven other people or you haven't apologized or you haven't told somebody the truth is like you're doing this thing and you don't really want to do it anymore but you're still working with this person like you got to clear all that shit out you got to get all that shit out of your system so you can be free i had to do that like before i started this page and doing all this stuff i had to clear i had to clear my conscience i had to clear guilt or i had to clear shame i had to clear all that shit out of my system in order to do what i do now because you can't it's it's not sustainable every day you're walking around with those heavy ass emotions and so you just got to be honest about everything and let it all go and be like yep if there's a person you don't like and you've been hanging out with them for four years be like man i don't like you because this isn't this and i gotta move on tell them the truth and get that shit off your shoulders bro i think that's what a mental session looks like you know, that's more of a spiritual session, to be honest. Like, it takes a lot of guts to do that stuff. But um, it's the reason I'm happier than most people. Because um, I figured out a way to live honestly without hurting other people. Or without hurting feelings and shit like that. Um, when you don't have access to 5 on 5 or 1v1s, what is useful practice for getting by your defender? You have to find access this is the thing like there's only so much you can do before you actually have to do the thing 
And so if you don't have access, you got to find access, whether you drive an hour or you get a ride or you ride your bike or you walk or something, something, bro, something. There's some I don't believe that there are places where people aren't playing basketball. I, I really don't believe that they're, you're telling me that you're the only one around you in a 10 mile radius that plays basketball. No. Um, so you need to figure out how to get access by any means necessary. That's what I would tell you. Like there's no, there's no substitution for real defense. I'm 15. Should I prioritize eight hours of sleep? Okay. This is a good question. Cause I practice at five in school at seven 30 sleep comes before everything. Sleep comes before everything. It's not even a question. Like, I do everything I can to get as much sleep as possible every single day. There's not, there's like, I don't even remember the last time I went through an entire day sleepy because I will get my sleep at all costs. I don't care if I wake up at 1 p.m. If I go to bed at like 5 in the morning, I'm getting my sleep. I'm not doing shit else. And so, um, like, I literally don't set alarms. I haven't set, I don't even remember the last time I set an alarm to wake up in the morning. Um, because I've designed my life in order to do that. But for the people who have to go to school and you have to do certain things, yes, prioritize sleep. Like sleeping will affect your shooting percentage. If it affects your performance, it's like, it's the equivalent of damn near being drunk while you're driving. Like sleep is by far the number one thing in your life that you need to prioritize. Nothing comes before sleep. And I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be like overly serious. Nothing comes before sleep, bro. You can't think clearly if you're sleepy. It's just, it's not, um, it's not sustainable. Where do I start with fundamentals of basketball and raising IQ? Uh, IQ, I mean, I have my academy for that. I have the playlist on my TikTok page that you can go through that I'm always doing IQ stuff. Um, even though I live up in Slack in a little bit, um, I think just watching and, and the thing I always say is like, listen to the commentators in NBA games. They will literally tell you how to play basketball. And as far as fundamentals, like this is something I said earlier to someone else too, right? There is no fundamentals are the only thing that exists. And so a lot of people think that, okay, I'm practicing fundamentals or I'm practicing fancy shit or advanced shit. It's like, no, when you do advanced shit, you got to do advanced shit fundamentally. And so fundamentals is a way of doing things. It's not that there's there's fundamentals, concepts or drills. And then there's like everything else. Those things are not set. There's nothing that's separate. It's either you're doing everything fundamentally or you're not. That That's all that exists. There is no, OK, this is fundamental. That's not fundamental. This is fun. like there's a fundamental way to do a, a between cross step back. There, there really is. Right. Is your dribble low enough? Like. Are you on balance when you step back? You know, are you shot ready when you step back? Like, that's fundamental. But the move in itself doesn't determine whether it's fundamental or not. You know what I'm saying? And so that's an understanding that a lot of people need to get to. Even coaches, even there's trainers out there, um, just everybody. Like, that's the number one thing I will tell, you know, all 38 of you that are in here. <laughs> Fundamentals is a way of doing thing and and nothing else exists you're either doing everything fundamentally or you're just not focused and you have bad techniques so if you want to learn how to do everything fundamentally um i always you got to start at the bottom so watch michael jordan watch kobe bryant those are the two, that's what i would tell you watch those two they're good in the post they're good on the wing they're good at dribbling they're good at attacking they're good at passing um you know, they're good at rebounding. They're good at everything. They're good at defense. And so watch them as close as possible. Like watch their stance, watch how low they are, watch how they cut people off. When they go for a steal, are they putting themselves in jeopardy of, of getting a foul? When they go for blocks, how are they blocking shots? Oh, okay. If you shoot with your left, I'm blocking my right. So then I don't reach across your body. It's like, it's different things like that. And so study those two players. And then the advanced version of though, of them, um, is probably Kyrie Irving. Like Kyrie is a more advanced, um, a more advanced version of Kobe and MJ. Like Kobe is a more advanced version of MJ and Kyrie is a more advanced version of Kobe just because he does more things. Um, he's not as simple as those two, but yeah, I would say study those three, 
like your life dependent on it and watch every single thing that they do and watch those old videos bro there's like old videos of like michael jordan teaching triple threat i used to watch those when i was a kid you know what i'm saying there's there's videos of like the old the, the nba used to make all these videos of how to do certain things go watch them like there's rip hamilton coming off the screens there's video of ray allen talking about shooting like i remember those things so vividly and i didn't even realize how much of an impact that made on me especially when i would hear like um ray allen says okay the ball is part of your body and it flows and like i would remember that and literally practice that like okay everything has to flow and feel perfect you know i remember the triple threat um video from michael jordan where it's like okay if you dribble by your leg they can't reach because your leg's in the way and your arm's in the way. Like, I watched that video, and I actually practiced those things. You know, and I remember the the Kobe Bryant signature move video where it's like, okay, you catch it, and you square up, and you jab step. Like, I watched all that shit. So watch all that shit. Stop watching trainers, and you'll figure out the fundamentals. Clippers are going crazy. The Clippers, they're sn- I don't know if I can trust them, man. You'll have to tell me. Um... Yeah, I don't know if I can trust the Clippers, man. I'll just have to see when the first round of the playoffs come what my thoughts are on them. Right now, I can't decide. How do you have a fast first step? Um, You actually have to get quicker, like in itself. You know what I mean? Like the quick people with the quickest first step, they're just naturally, they're already, I shouldn't say naturally, they're just already quick, you know, with or without the ball. And then, you know, you got to move, move well. And so I think it's just like work on your explosiveness, literally. Um, And that'll translate to your first step. I grinded on reserve for two years. I've been on reserve too. I remember my junior, my sophomore year, I was playing so bad. I got moved down to reserve from JV because I had the skills for JV. I had the skills for varsity, but I just was not ready at all. I probably, I I don't think I was athletic enough or good enough on defense to play varsity as a sophomore I was skilled enough and so that's why I was on JV but I just like I just wasn't I don't know I just hadn't learned everything I needed to learn you know like I needed to learn so much more and like I wasn't being taught but when I was being coached on reserve like I was actually being taught things so it's like oh okay this is how I'm more efficient in the game this is how I play and this is how I do things and then um the next year I got more comfortable with the ball. Um, I got more comfortable attacking. I was faster. I was quicker. You know, so it's not a bad thing to be. There's no there's no bad thing to be as far as, like, what team you're on. I think it's just you got to learn what you got to learn, and you're in a specific spot for a reason. So take what you can from the situation and then keep it moving. You know, a lot of people like the prestige of being on varsity, but it's like you need to be on JV right now. You know, to learn. Um, 2024 Olympics. I don't know what. I don't know what that's about. Oh, that's in. Where is the Olympics this year? I can't remember. Isn't the World Cup um, in the U.S. In Seattle or some shit? I don't know. I'm not going to look it up right now. Um, You're right. The game is basic. Yeah, the game is basic, man. It's, it's, it's. it's surprisingly basic basketball is surprisingly basic (laughs) it's just it's highlights man highlights trick people you know like i told people a few lives ago to just chart it and write down how many shots were basic and how many shots were like some fancy move that you've seen on instagram and it's going to be like a night it's going to be like an 85 15 split nine times out of ten you're doing the most basic shit on earth it's just the thing about it is you have to recognize opportunities. And so if you have to, if you feel like you got to do so many moves to get so many shots and you got to go one on one all the time, you're just not recognizing opportunities to either like cut or attack a closeout well or just go through a gap. There's like so many different things and so many different opportunities that present themselves, presents itself. And most people just don't see it or they're not aware enough or they just don't have the knowledge yet to take advantage of you know, a defensive mistake or a gap or something like that. Um, if I'm a point guard, will your wing scoring program still apply to my game or should, or are you going to make another one for point guards? Yeah, I think the workout programs will. So the wing one is just like more outside shooting, a little bit inside stuff. The post one is like 15 feet and in, and the pure shooting one is like all shooting. Like there's no, there's no basket stuff. And so, 
it depends on what you need in the moment. Um, and nine times out of ten, like you're gonna give the ball up anyway. Like if you're going one on one a ton as a point guard, then you're not doing your job. Like you should be passing, and then you'll end up getting the ball back, and then you're automatically off the ball anyway. So, yeah, I think it just depends what you need. Like if you need some floaters and inside scoring, I don't know if I put floaters here. I'll pull it up really quick so I can make sure I'm telling you right information. Because sometimes I make these, um, and then I'll, I'll forget like the specifics of what I put on there. I just know what I put on there mattered. Um, yeah, I can look it up. Yeah, so if you need like floaters and layups, then get the wing one. If you need like only shooting and off the dribble shooting, then get the um, get the pure shot one. And the pure shot one is more for like if you're already really good at the most basic shots, I put um, sh I put shooting off the dribble stuff in that. So just a different level. If I'm a big transforming to a guard for college, how long will it take me to get better as a PG? I don't think you can go from big to point guard. You have to go from big to wing to point guard. That's a big ass jump going from big to point guard. Um, but how long does it take? It's just how long are you going to do the work? Like the more work you do, the more experience you get, um, the faster it goes. So I can't really put a number on it. It just comes down to your experience, your knowledge of the position. Um, and because for me, like I played, there was not there was never a time where I got to play the same position two years in a row. And there was never a time where I got to play the same level of competition two years in a row. Like that was, that was the hardest part about my career literally is I never got to get used to what I was doing. Like I always had to adapt the very next year. And so even from, I'm trying to think. So in seventh grade, I played on three teams and there's teams where I played, there's one team I played the point guard, there's one team I played the wing, and there's one team I played the post, all in the same season. And then eighth grade, it was semi the same. My freshman year, I wanted to be a point guard, so I was a backup point guard. And then my sophomore year, I had to play the wing. I played a little bit of point guard, but I just wasn't good at it yet because I didn't get enough reps the year before. I just wasn't used to it. I wasn't fast enough, things like that. And so then I was a wing. And then my junior year, I was a point guard. And then my senior year, I was like a forward playing power forward, which is my worst position by far is playing the four. I suck at it. I just don't understand what I'm supposed to be doing. Like I need the ball. And then my freshman year in college, they had me playing forward again. And then after my red shirt year, I was back to point guard. And then the year after that, I was back to the wing. And then the year after that, I was back to the post. So like, in every single year, I had to move teams. I, I just played on different teams every year. So, like, that by far was the hardest shit of my career. And it's probably the thing that stopped me from getting as much progress as I should have. Like, if I would have just been able to play one thing the entire time, um, I would have been way, way better off. But that's why I think I know so much because I understand the experiences. Like, I understand what it's like to start and play every second. And I know what it's like to not play at all. And I know what it's like to be the sixth man. I know what it's like to be the number one option. I know what it's like to just be like the eighth person on the bench. Like, I, I know. You know, but it, it's all that stuff um, I had to learn in order to help y'all, you know. Which sucked, but it is what it is. Coaches and older players keep saying I'm good, but I'm scared and passive. I don't know what to do. You need to play basketball. If you're scared and passive, you don't play enough basketball. You don't play enough pickup. You don't play enough one-on-one. -on -one. You need to play as much as possible. Like, experience erases fear. You know what I'm saying? If I've surfed giant-ass waves 10,000 times, what's 10,001? But if I've never surfed a big-ass wave and I've been doing simulation, I'm probably going to be a little bit scared. You know? And so I think you got to play pick up and get comfortable with yourself. Like it's that, like that's the thing, you know, do I even coach Monarchs? No, I quit Monarchs. I quit Monarchs in 20, I don't even remember shit. I want to say the year after all of you left, um, we had, I had one more year with them. Yeah, so I think in 2021, I left. And then 2022, 
um, I, w- I was with a new program from 21 to 22. And then I quit that. And then last year was 23. So I had my own team. Yeah. So no, I left. I just had to leave. It was just time. It was it was time for me to move on and do my own thing, to be honest. Why do I have such a big water bottle? It's a gallon, bro. It's just, it's cheaper. This shit was $1.75, you know? That's why. And I don't want like 8,000 plastic water bottles roaming around my house. Because that's what happens when I buy like cases. Uh, I play like a guard, but like I can dribble, shoot. Um, all is just that I don't have defense. Defense. So you, the best defenders are explosive. They're quick. Um, they're strong. And so I think you generally have to get more athletic and then you have to understand defense within itself. Like, uh, I made a defensive video, but it's only in the Academy. And like, as much as I want to put it out, um, I got to make stuff for the Academy because I feel like I put out so much shit. And the thing that is insane to me is people will ask questions about things that I've put in videos a zillion times or something I've posted about so many times. And it's like, I swear y'all don't listen to me. And so I had to start charging for shit. So the people that pay me are going to take it serious because I need people to take some people have to at least take me serious. I can't I don't want to be talking to the fucking ether and people don't do shit with the information. So that's why I charge for the academy. That's why I charge people have to at least take me serious. I can't I don't want to be talking to the fucking ether and people don't do shit with the information. So that's why I charge for the academy. That's why I charge for in person. My bad. The uh, my phone's about to die. It's on 20 percent. So the next time my phone pauses, um, live's going to be over. So it might be very abrupt. <laughs> Just a heads up. Um, but uh, what was I saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Defense. Um, you got to understand defense as a whole. So I have defensive stuff in my playlist. So you can watch that. But generally, you got to get quicker, faster, stronger and, and predict people's moves and pick up on their tendencies really fast. That's what's going to help you the most. I don't know. Um, do I think Hooper should drink a gallon a day? No, don't drink a gallon a day. I think a gallon a day is like, um, there's just like certain things, like it can wash out things in your body that you need if you drink too much water. I learned that. I remember my mom was a nurse and like I got in an argument with her because I didn't believe her when she said you can drink too much water. And I was like, there's no way you can drink too much water. I was like, this is, it just didn't make sense in my mind. Like, how is that even possible? Um, but then I went... I, I went to some like doctors or something and they were like, have you been drinking a lot of water? And they like, yeah. And I said, yeah. And they're like, I should drink a little bit less because it washes out too much stuff that you need in the moment. It's good for like, if you need to cleanse your body and stuff, but I would generally say, um, you know, your body tells you when you're thirsty for a reason. So if you're thirsty, then you should probably drink some water. Otherwise you'll probably be okay. And, and when you drink, if you're sweating, and you're drinking a lot of water, use, put a little bit of salt and lemon juice in there for like electrolytes. That's a little trick you can use for the game. But don't too, don't put too much lemon juice and salt because it'll make your throat dry. And it'll be hard to breathe. So keep that in mind. Yeah, bro, I think you just got to stop being scared and you got to play more. If you're getting cussed out because of it, yeah. I mean, what are you being scared of? People are literally wanting you to do things. You just don't think you're good enough then. That means you don't have enough experience. Um, the jump attack book I swear by the book yeah where's that shit at it's over on my shelf Um, yeah your whole body I didn't do the upper body part when it came to jump attack but I swear by jump attack like you gotta be in shape to start it and so don't start it without having been worked out like you can't start jump attack cold you're like you'll fucking pass out but um yeah if you're trying to get like in the best shape of your life jump attack you ever get like a really bad flu uh i've had food poisoning that's like the most i don't really get sick to be honest yeah have i watched ten thousand hours nope what do i think about trainers like drew hanlon and them 
um, um, what they're teaching will not translate to you because you have to learn. You have to learn. There's like a base level of basketball that you that needs to be learned. And if you don't know it, the higher you get on the ladder, um, the faster you'll fail. That's why people when when people ask me, why didn't Mikey Williams X Y Z? Why isn't I don't know even the names they name. They name like some names. And they'll they'll be wondering why they're not good or why their game ain't translating or why they're not dominating, but they're like a top player. It's because they don't understand the base level of basketball of like, can you score a lot of points pretending as if you're a role player? That's the game that you're playing. So without doing all these fucking moves, without going one on one, without getting into your bag, can you score? If you can't do that, you're not going to be good. That like that's I'm telling you. That's why Imani Bates is in the G League. It's like, can you play efficient basketball without having to put the ball down six times per possession? I'm telling you, that's the thing. And so it looks great when all these people are doing all these moves and they do these cool workouts and it's like twitching all over the place and how to get your defender off balance. But like when you give that up, when you give that ball up, do you understand spacing? Do you understand cutting? Do you know how to set a screen? Do you know when to slip and why? Um, you know what I'm saying? Like all these things are important and people just want to act like it's not important. Like I, it drives me nuts. It's like Steph doesn't have to put the ball down seven times per possession to score. Neither does Kevin Durant. Neither does Luca, but he does, but he, he don't have, I promise you put Luca off the ball and you'll see, you'll be like, Oh shit, he can play off the ball. He just, he's so good with the ball. It just don't matter. He's not going to Kyrie, the best, you know, one-on-one player in the league or one of them. He don't need to put the ball down seven times every time to score. And so, like, that's the thing that most people are missing. And that's the thing those a lot of trainers aren't telling you. They just want you to buy the programs and come train with them because it looks cool. And they're training all these high-level guys and it looks awesome. And it's like, well, he trains Jason Tatum, so he can make me good. It's like, no, you got to learn shit. Jason Tatum can hit 53s in a row without moving. Like, you know what I'm saying? He can play efficient basketball. He knows how. But even some of those guys forget that's what they're supposed to be doing. That's why Kevin Durant's always going to be good. It's like, watch Kevin Durant, bro. This fool doesn't do anything. He lo- like he just takes advantage of situations that um, most people. Like, it's the thing I was saying before. Like, there's always a situation to take advantage of to score, and most people don't aren't good enough to recognize it. But he's so good, and he can recognize it that like like that's his only play style, you know. And then sometimes it's like, okay, let me get the ball in a spot and go one on one. Let me hit you with a couple moves. But, like, the other 85% of the time, like, he ain't doing shit. He's just hitting spot ups. He's cutting. He's playing a down screen perfectly. He's backdooring. Like, it's that. And he's seven feet. He don't really have to do that, but that's what makes him so fucking elite. Um, How to get quicker feet on defense. I think just literally do the defensive slides. Um, do ladder drills, do footwork drills, line drills, jump rope, like work on the quickness of your feet, literally. And then your mind has to be quick. So like there's people who can't stay in front of me that are like so fucking quick, but they just don't think fast enough. So you're, you can be slow footed, but if you think fast enough, um, you can still be good on defense. Um, if I really focus on my game starting today from today and always go 100 till summer how far will i go i don't know so again (laughs) this is a question this is a question a lot of people ask it's like if i do this what results am i going to get like if you're only chasing the result you're not going to keep it up like you got to make it a part of your lifestyle and it's not that going after result is like unimportant but it just has to the process has to be a part of who you are or will not be sustained And so, like, for me, I didn't know anything else other than to go 100 and do the best I possibly could. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know anything else existed. Like, there was times where I was, it was either I'm going 100, and but there was, like, a window of time in college where I was just, like, checked out of basketball. Like, I didn't want to do it. I didn't give a fuck. And so, like, those were the times where, and even if I worked out, I was still on 100, but it was just, like, I wasn't doing it as much as I should have. And things like that. Like I was fresh off my knee injury. I think I was a red shirt that year. So I just like I was just chilling. 
But when I'm active and like doing the thing, it's always 100. I don't because I feel embarrassed if somebody's watching me work out and I'm not trying as hard as I can. I literally do feel it. I feel like a sense of embarrassment. It's like, damn, you just watched me do this. And I was half assing. You know what I'm saying? I felt I would feel embarrassed if my coaches see me half asses. And so like that's just how I thought about it. And I always thought about um, like, damn, what if I was working out with my favorite player? Like what if Kobe was in the gym with me right now? Like would he approve of like how hard I'm going and I these are real thoughts I had it sounds stupid but there's times like I'm on the bench press and I'm literally struggling and I got three reps left and I'm like man I just know MJ wouldn't quit and so I would fucking like muster up some you know muscle or whatever the fuck and muster up some energy and just like push that shit out as hard as I could and finish my set like I did that all the time like when I was running and I was like pretty much about to fall over pass out and I had to do a little bit more running I'd be like, man, I know these dudes wouldn't quit, so I'm not fucking quitting. And like, that's like, that's what kept me going. And so um, to answer your question directly of like, how far am I going to go? I mean, I don't, there's no real answer. You know, everything depends. Like there's people who have a a shit ton of talent and they got to work out three hours a day and they'll make, you know, they'll be a pro. Um, And there's people who have to work out six hours a day to get exactly what that same person got. what would you say is the truth when it comes to basketball? Um, the truth is fundamentals are undefeated because like I explained earlier, it's the only thing that exists. There is nothing else that exists. There's either you're doing everything fundamentally or you're not, it doesn't matter what you're doing. And so I think that's the truth. And then the other truth is experience matters. Like the people you play against on a daily basis, matters you know um if you're playing only against people who are not good you're not going to get very far it doesn't matter how much you practice and so that's the thing about the u.s and the reason we're still so competitive as compared to the rest of the world is because um we like we can go the we our ceiling is the nba here so we can physically go play against nba players at open gym like kobe was 15 playing against eddie jones for the lakers LeBron was at open gym with Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Jamal Crawford played with Doug Christie. Isaiah Thomas's mentor was Nate Robinson when he was in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? And so like the better you get, there's a higher ceiling to reach. And so if you're really good in one area, you can go to another area and get better experience. You can go to another area and keep climbing the ladder and climbing the ladder and climbing the ladder. And eventually you can play against NBA players while you're in high school, if you are good enough. And so people act like that shit don't matter. Um, you know, a lot of people don't say it. Like no one ever told me that shit. If I would have known that I would have been looking for the fiercest competition. And like, I don't, I wouldn't care if I would have got my ass whipped at some open gym against college players when I was 15, I just needed to be there. You know what I'm saying? To figure it out. Um, but I think it's those two things. It's experience and fundamentals combined. You know what I mean? Like, because if you have the guts to be on the floor with an NBA player and you're 15 years old and you go back to your high school, please, man, like, please, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's just and I think this is what helped me when I was young. The person I'd, I'd play somebody one on one. He lived down the street from me. He was four years older than me. Like, and we play one on one all the time. And so it's like he was stronger than me. I, I could not beat this dude. I could not fucking beat him. It took me forever to beat him. Like I beat him on a game winning shot. I crossed him. When I figured out, start figuring out how to do crossovers, I crossed him and I got to a spot and I went up and he fucking hacked the shit out of me and I barely got the shot off and it went in and I beat him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember that shit because it took me a thousand tries. And so when I was playing other middle schoolers, it was like, you're garbage, bro. Like, you think you're going to guard me? No, you have no shot. And then, you know, that's just what it was. And like when I was in high school, um, I was playing against a D1 player, you know, at open gyms. I was- My shit cut off. My bad. Yeah, my phone's about to die. So probably like three more minutes. Um, Yeah, but like that's what I would say. Experience matters. And once you dominate one level of experience, you got to find the next level. That's your path. And you got to understand fundamentals. You have to be taught. You have you need a mentor. Like I asked, um, there's a WNBA player who posts on TikTok, Ariel Powers. I don't know if some of y'all follow her. 
I asked her in the comments, I was like, how'd you learn to hoop growing up? And she said, my dad taught me and I played against dudes and she's a WNBA player. And so it's like when she go, when you play against dudes your whole life as a girl and you go play against girls, it's like, this is nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what it is, bro. I can't plug it in because it's plugged into my mic, bro. Um, yeah, a couple more and then I'm out. I went over the time anyway. Do you think Luca can win a ring with his play style? Nope. We've seen it a billion times. We've seen Kobe in 06. We've seen Harden in 18. We've seen LeBron in 09. Um, we've seen Michael Jordan in 88. I mean, how many more examples do we need before we learn this does not work? How do I stop missing short and long? I get a ton of reps, but um, the power off sometimes. Mm, how much is a ton of reps? Because a ton of reps to you might be nothing to me. So give me a number. Do you make money off TikTok and do you have another job? Do I make money off TikTok? Yes. Do I have another job? No. I've designed my life to not have another job. I can't have a job, bro. I'm just, I'm not built for it, man. The longest job I've had, 11 months. I was, oh, I hated my life every day, man. Waking up at the crack ass of dawn, driving across town in the cold, in my beater. It was just, it sucked, man. It sucked. So no. Um, don't forget, people, um, I have stuff on, I have free stuff on my website too, grandmasterhoof.com. It's not the one in the bio. The one in my bio right now is the Academy. It's 99 for the year, but it's like, I'm going to spill out all of my knowledge into videos. So it's like $99 for a year for, you know, everything I know. I'd pay that. That's just me personally. You know what I'm saying? It's a one-time investment. It's infinite IQ. Like if you're taking basketball serious, you know, why wouldn't, why wouldn't you? Um, how'd I get my knowledge? <sighs> That's a good question, man. That's a good question. I would say the overarching way I got my knowledge was I was obsessive. Like when I told you I watched all those videos when I was like, when I was a teenager, all of them, you know, NBA videos of like Michael Jordan and triple. Th like I watched everything, man. Kobe Mix One with the Eminem, Kobe Mix Two, Greatness Personified with Kobe Mix. I watched that shit like every fucking day. Um, <laughs> just everything, man. The Iverson interviews with Stephen A. You know that video that I posted on my Instagram of, um, yeah, that that interview of me. Or uh, no, yeah, the the video I posted on Instagram of Kobe doing like the Jeet Kune Do, um, I had just found that, but I used to watch that channel all the time, like just random shit, bro, random shit. Like, I, and then, you know, I went to a ton of basketball camps. I watched basketball like, like a madman. Um, like I had a couple really really good coaches. My reserve coach and my JV coach at high school helped me out a ton. Like they helped me out a ton. Um. You know, they really worked with me and, like, helped me understand basketball. And I was just a savant, like a watch and learn master, bro. This is what I always say. If you want to take your game to the top level, you have to be able to watch and learn. I can watch something and do it in the game the next day. Like, that was me at 15. You know what I'm saying? So I was a fucking – and then I'm listening to the commentators because I watch full games, and they're just always telling you shit. Like, this is what you should do at the end of the game. This is – Oh, Kobe Bryant has the best fundamentals in the league. And it's like, oh, okay, Kobe says practice this way. And this is what they do. And like, okay, I'm starting to understand. It's just like, every, I don't know, bro. I don't know how I got to this point of knowledge, but it, man, it was just meant to be. That's what I feel like. How? Do, okay. How did I get in the position of making money? Okay. I'll, I'll answer that one last. I'm going to answer these other two and then I'm going to close it out with that. Um, And then I'm going to close the chat so I won't be able to see anything. What skill programs are you going to have in the academy? I'm still figuring those out right now. I really am. Um, I got to, yeah, I'm going to work on that. And then my coach makes me get 200 threes aside from regular training, about the same amount. So 400. So, f so 400 total. Um, I would say double it and hold yourself accountable to, for being absolutely perfect. Either either double it or only count swishes. Those are your only two options. So, like, you got to be fucking laser perfect. 
All right. Um, yeah, so then I'll answer um, how do I get the position to make money doing what I love. So I'm closing out the chat so I won't see anything um, from now on. This is the last question I'm about to answer. So um, the way I got to do what I love, I really just made it a priority, bro. Like I couldn't and I can't see myself doing anything else. But I think the number one thing I did was hopefully my phone don't die before I get this off. The number one thing I did was I really like started being just completely honest in my life when it came to everything with even where it's like I just had a level of self-awareness and I stopped drinking. And I stopped smoking like that That by far was the biggest game changer. I stopped doing drugs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like <laughs> like that was just changed my entire life. Um, and I started reading books. You know what I'm saying? Like and I started reading books because I had saw this interview. I had heard the podcast, the very first podcast, like the first two episodes with Kyrie and LeBron on road tripping with J- with uh, with Richard Jefferson and Channing Frye. They were talking about books and they're like, I was like, damn, he's did read books. And they were like, yeah, man, I read The Alchemist, this, that, and that. So I read The Alchemist. And after that, I got really into books. I just started reading. Um, you know, what I'm saying I'm reading like The Four Agreements. I'm reading 48 Laws. I'm reading um, you know, the seat of the soul I'm reading like these books and it's like just changing everything for me. And then I got to a point to where it's like, okay, I have to be honest about everything, you know, like in, in the four agreements, it's like being impeccable, being impeccable with your word, which is just being completely honest. So I started being honest about what I wanted to do and how I wanted to live and all the things that had happened. You know, I apologize to the people I needed to apologize to. And I just cleared, it's the thing I talked about earlier. I just cleared my consciousness and my anxiety and um my emotions i cleared all that shit out so i could just be completely honest about what it is i wanted to do and i just went in that direction as hard as much as i could until i um until opportunities kept popping up in order for me to get paid to do this and so that's the short answer before my phone dies i think i just i think i just made it made it a point to be live completely honest and that's why i curse on here like i don't come on here and bullshit I don't come on here and fake like I don't curse. And you see me in person and I drop an F-bomb and you're fucking surprised. It's like, no, I'm going to drop an F-bomb right away. So, you know, this is who I am. <laughs> and so I just started being completely honest in my life. And I really decided that I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. I've already decided that before, but I just knew. I was like, I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm going to do what I want to do. And I don't care how I'm going to get it done. And opportunities will open themselves, open themselves up to me in order for me to do what I need to do. And so I'm in a position now to where I can just get paid to do this because it's what I really want to do. I like making videos. I like helping people. I like coaching basketball. It's the thing I want to do the most more than anything. Yes, I love music and I love design and I love other shit, but this is what I want to do. And so I made it a point to go after that at all costs. I didn't care um, about the car I had. I didn't. I don't care that my apartment is 575 bucks a month and I don't even control the heat in this bitch. <laughs> I don't care, care about none of that. I care about doing what I want and then I'll figure everything else after that. You know, that's how.